Well, howdy YouTube. How's everybody doing today? This is your friendly neighborhood Chef Shade Tree here. Uh, yeah, today we've got, uh, it's like 79 degrees out today. And I took, brought both Mustangs out. I got both Mustangs out of the shop, out of the garage today. I thought this might be a op good opportunity, and it might be my last chance to take this car out for a little drive. But, before I do that, I wanted to just give you a little backstory on this car. This is a 1985 Mustang GT convertible. Okay, now, when I found this car, this car was in pieces. So I've got some pictures here to show you guys. And uh, let me get the picture book here real quick, and I'll show you how... I'm going to show you guys. So here's my dad's picture album here. And uh, it's got all the cars in it. But here, if you guys can see this, I hope... It looks like it's going to come in pretty good. Get it focused in. There we go. Right there is how we found this car. In this guy's garage. This is this guy's garage. Now, um... The guy that I worked with, uh, his brother had this car. And you can see it was in a garage. And there was this car, and then there was another car in front of it. So we had to pull all these, these there was two vehicles here that we had to pull out. So you can see the transmission is in the car. Fenders, doors, everything's off the car. So that is how we found the car. That's how we got it, right there. And then we brought it home. Dad took pictures of it out of the house. So there it was. So we drug that thing home. Piece by piece. <laughs> There's the interior, how it was. So as I, like I tell you, it was just nothing but a shell. That's how we found the car. So there it is. That's Dad's garage right there up in Ohio. So that's where we got it. He started putting, you know, he was getting it put together. There's what we do with brakes and calipers everything. Painted everything up. Started getting it ready to paint. And there it is in the body shop. Now, uh, my dad has a good friend of his, a good guy. And uh, he did the body work for him on it. So there it was in the body shop. Getting primer. And there it was after it got out. So you can see that my dad did a lot of this work on this car. He put it together. The guy painted it. We brought it back home and then proceeded to put the thing together. And there's a little slow process of the car going together. As you can see, there it is in my dad's garage. There we are, Put got the motor put in it, getting her all going. So as you can see, just, there's a process of doing it in the garage at home, and that's how we did it. Right in the garage. As you can see, it's all up on jack stands. Slowly put it together. So I think that's the end. Yeah, that was the last, that's the last fit photo of it that he's got here in this photo album. There you guys go. That's what the process of was uh, putting this thing together. And as you can see, he had some guy down here in Florida take these seats and re reupholster them in red, le red and gray leather. And that's what they look like. So, uh, yeah. Then he had a radio put in it. But anyways, there it is. Let me give you a, I'll give you a little close-up picture of the motor that's in this car. Now these, now 1985, convertible, automatic only, these cars come with a throttle body injected 302, automatic only. If you had a stick shift, it was carbureted. But an automatic car, it had a throttle body fuel injected motor in it. So let me show you what's got in it now. So since my dad had a pretty much clean slate on this um, car, he wanted to do something different. Instead of the throttle body injected motor, uh, the throttle, throttle body injected motor is like 175 horsepower, I think, stock, which isn't much. And so he decided to go ahead 
and put a Cobra motor in it. Now this motor alone, it's it's had the bottom end done in it. It's got eagle rods in, eagle crank, uh, good pistons. It's got GT40 heads. It's not the GT40P heads. It's the, just the regular GT40 heads with the GT40 intake on it. So this this car's probably got a little. It's got a little ass to it. It's it's not too bad. Um, it might be hovering right around 300 horse, maybe. I who knows. But that's that's just my guesstimate. So dad dad did a little port work to the heads. So they're you know they're ported out a little bit for a little extra flow. So that's where he got. And uh, guys, what I want to do today is take it out for a little cruise since it's real nice out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it out for a nice little stroll through the neighborhood and might go in the Sebring real quick. So uh, let's I'm going to get this thing put back in the garage here and we'll take this thing out for a cruise. So let's fire this thing up. So now I did have a run in here earlier. So it's it's almost I don't know it's on oops. Turn the radio off. It didn't uh yeah. Okay, enough of that. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> We're gonna go for a little cruise now. I'll show you around this place a little bit. I can show you how this thing runs. The thing's a beast to keep going. This is a road going out of here. I want to show you this uh, road right here, now where the stop sign is at. This, is, like you see, you can see it's known as Dwayne Palmer Boulevard. Okay. Now this Dwayne. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. See how rough it is to run. But this Dwayne Palmer Boulevard is a big circle all the way around this place. It goes. Yeah. Yeah, I'll just say it just goes all the way around, big circle out here. And then if you go all, go this way, you'll end up right back here. But I'm gonna go to the right here, because I wanna go down another road here real quick. So we're going this way. I'm gonna go out this way. This is Spring Lake Boulevard right here. So we'll go out this way. See, this is a pretty nice neighborhood right here. We're out here, nice, real nice place. A lot of nice houses around here. This is known as Spring Lake. That's what this is. It's a golfing community. Now, this this uh, community has got a pretty nice little history. My dad knew the whole history about this place. Something about NASA, uh, or some some Air Force, or not the Air Force, but somebody built built this community for a certain purpose. And, but anyways, I'll have to read back up on the history of this place so I can get a feel of it. But I just thought I'd show you around here real quick. We're going. I want to go out out to the town. I'll show you how far I'm from Sebring. But you can see how rough this thing is to drive. I wish I had I wish I could put it down in the second gear because it's tooling around and drive just it needs a stall converter put in it. That's what it needs. But I'm uh I'm about ten miles well like I said from my Dad's house to the lake is like 10 miles. To Lake Jackson is 10 miles. So I'm a little less, well, season, downtown Sebring is a little more than 10 miles. So, uh, yeah, we're out here on this highway. 
this this is a uh, State Route 92. in an overdrive here. So I got five miles to go down this road to go to uh, 98. Or not 98, 27. This is 98. This road here is 98. And I gotta go hit 27 to go into Sebring. I might take it around by the track real quick. I think maybe I'll do that. Maybe I'll do that real quick. We'll go over by the we'll go over by the racetrack. This is the way to get to the racetrack. There is a back way to get to it, but I think they they blocked it off. They didn't like people going through the little thing they have back in the corner. So right now, this is the only way to get to the Sebring racetrack. Sebring International Raceway. I know you guys like to hear the tone of the motor run. We go, he's got people out here setting up for veggies and fruit and whatnot. Kind of the back way to get into Sebring, really, if you go this direction. But I'm gonna go this way and show you guys the Sebring racetrack. It's not too far. Right over there is the Sebring racetrack. There's spectator gates all across there, all over the place. used to be a big tower over here where they did the waste the water treatment plant, but they tore it down. But right there, you guys, is Sebring International Raceway and the airport. Airport, racetrack, everything all in one. I don't know where exactly the main entrance is here, I think. It's been a while since I've been here, but I think it's right here, the main entrance. Yeah, here's the main entrance right here. This is the main entrance to Sebring International Raceway. There's a hotel over there. So, yeah. I'm going to talk to this guy here real quick. So I talked to that guy and they have an SCCA event going on this weekend. This is the second biggest race of the year next to the 12 hour Sebring race. So that's pretty cool. I didn't know that was going on. So that was nice to know. So I'm gonna go ahead and go, to, go into town right now. Now going out this way here to town, there is nothing but orange groves out this way. So I'll take you out past these orange groves here. We've got some uh, road work going on here. Looks like got the sand storm going here. That's, yeah. Well, let me get out of here real quick. Okay, I got through all that little, little mess going on right there, doing a little road work. I'll get out here past the orange groves. As you can see, once you get up to RPM in this car, it don't, it don't cruise too bad. I can kick it down in the drive. There we go. Kick it down the drive, it, it's pretty peppy. I 
don't know if the wind noise is getting in here, but there we go. Now out here's where the orange goes are, guys. I'm gonna take her in the old drive. There we go. There's nothing but oranges out here, guys. As far as the eye can see, just about. <laughs> Let's stop along one of these days and pick a couple oranges out here. Now my dad, he had an orange tree out in the front yard one time, but I don't think it made it. It didn't survive. I might have to uh, plant an orange tree out there someday, but there you go, there you go, all the, all the, all the orange trees out here. miles ago. I don't want to make this uh, thing too long for you guys. This, this road here pretty much takes you around and takes you right, right straight into town. I'm a couple miles away from it yet, so I might sh shut you off right now and I'll head into town. Oh, we're coming in town, so uh, yeah. You know, I gotta watch traffic here, but anyways, we're coming into town. Now, I do believe the high school is right here off to the right. This is Sebring, so the school is going on right now. So we got to slow her down, go through here. All right, there's Sebring High School. School. All right, there's the school, guys. Pause this, we get more in the town. Guy, guy was up beside me, said, I was at a stoplight, and he said, rolled his window down his truck. He's in a Chevrolet truck. He said, There's nothing like a sound of a 5.0. <laughs> I had to rev it up, rev it up for him a little bit. So this is this is a normal 5.0 in here. <laughs> but you gotta kick out of that. But right here is Lakeview Drive, and that's the road I took you down, you know, for the first time I come down here, take a tour around Lake Jackson, but Lake Jackson is right dead in front of me. So this is Lakeview Drive right here. So I'm just gonna take it left here and go around that way real quick. Oh, I should say too, Lakeview Drive here goes around the lake. If you go that way to the right, that takes you right to dead downtown Sebring. So that's coming the back way here. So uh, yeah, we'll get going here. So right over there is the lake. I don't know if you can see it. The uh, house is in the way, but I'm gonna go this way. I'm gonna go over to the Ford dealership real quick. I stopped at the Ford dealership in the black car here a couple weeks ago. I thought I'd stop over with this car real quick. So that's where I'm heading. Don't go to the Ford dealer. As you can see guys, it's rather busy here today. Kind of surprised it's not usually this busy but i don't come uptown much on during the week i usually come up in on the weekends but it's rather busy today no wonder i don't come to town during the week <laughs> well guys i parked in front of here in front of alan j ford here in sebring and they got the big old american flag flying up here and so i just park it out here real quick and talk to some guys and uh I've had a lot of lookers at it. A lot of people have been uh, stopping by and checking it out. So, uh, yeah. There we go, guys. Okay, I left the Ford dealer. We're just going to take a little tool here. Right over there is Lake Jackson. Be back. 
Well, I'm in traffic, but I thought I'd stop. I'll take this time and do this. You can hear this thing run. This, this thing run. Oh, you bitch. I stole it there. This thing's rough to drive. Now he's uh, got to keep on it or it'll stall on me. So that's why it happened there. I stalled the thing. But anyways, I got it back going again. I'm going to shut her off. I got. I can't do this and record all at the same time, but we'll get back with you. Look at there, guys. An old Ranchero. Nice. <laughs> nice. There we guys go. We got the... Uh, Oh, white vert here at the uh, grand old Lake Lake Jackson. <laughs> well, tool around here. Uh, I don't want to make this uh, video too much longer, but I thought I'd take you for a little tool in this car and show you some pictures of how we found it, what we looked like when I got the car. And uh, yeah, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this little video. I'm gonna go ahead and get going, and I'm gonna head back home. So. Uh, I want to take the uh, Blackbird out for a little drive today. Today is it's uh, 79 degrees out right now. It might be 80 now, but uh, we got a cold front coming in tonight. I know right around the rest of the country it's raining and nasty out. Well, it's heading this way, so I thought I'd take this out for a little cruise today, tool around in it, and check out the scenery. And well, hope you guys enjoyed it. So we'll catch you back in the next one. Thanks for always watching. Likes, comment, share, subscribe. Thanks, guys.